Welcome to Better Life Project TV, the place to be to make your awesome business and life happen. Today, I am so incredibly freaking excited to be joined by the one and only OH Fitness, Siobhan O'Hagan. Siobhan is really well known for being a social media influencer. You guys might see her on Snapchat or Instagram. All those amazing photographs that she puts up of an absolutely banging body. <laughs> but there's a different type of transformation that I want to talk to Siobhan about. Siobhan, in a previous life, used to be a mathematician, financial, actuary. Yeah. Well, I'm going <laughs> to let her tell us about her journey and basically what she's needed to do to get her to where she is right now. So first of all, welcome and thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming along. What's your journey been like so far? Because in the last 18 months or two years, you've experienced a hell of a transformation in your life, in your job, in your body, in so many different areas. I really want to understand the job and the mindset piece. Yeah, well, I suppose this time two years ago, I was working in recruitment after leaving the financial yeah. software company. I was, I, le I left the financial software company because it was too small for me, and I thought I'd take on the world okay. in recruitment. And um, I was doing, I was recruiting for accountants, and you know, very much involved in the IFSC, mm -hmm. and just you know, meeting CFOs and you know, living the high life in, mm -hmm. in the finance world. Um, and then at this, in my personal life, I was. Not really happy. I was trained. I was going to the gym a bit. I was out drinking with my friends every weekend, and you know, felt great having the laughs. But then I just didn't know where I was going. Like I just thought I didn't know what else to do because I'd left. I'd tried. I didn't want to be an actuary, and I had studied actuarial maths in college. Didn't want to be an actuary, but I knew I was good at software. I left the software company to try recruitment, thinking I could take on the world and you know, mm. progress to the ranks be the, the next, I don't know, whoever's good at recruitment. Um, <laughs> and then it got to a point where I was like, I need to make changes and I didn't know what to do. And I looked at doing a master's in software engineering and, but I know I didn't want it enough mm. to even look at moving things around money wise. I was like, I don't actually want it that much. And then, you know, they kind of, they say do what you love and, you know, kind of yeah. threw around the idea of, I loved. I knew I loved going to the gym, mm -hmm. and I thought about do, being a personal trainer. Looked up the hours and work, and or looked up the hours for the course, and it clashed with the hours in, that I was working. Mm -hmm. Went to the HR manager, and said, "Any chance I could like work an extra hour here if I could leave an hour early?" Mm -hmm. And they said no, and I, I was just so upset at that stage. I just didn't know what I was going to do in my life. I had a similar type of no when I was looking to transition from one to the other I asked for some time off and I was told no as well yeah I know and like th these things you know that could be that could have been the end but I don't know if it was faith or what but then I bumped into a girl I used to work with mm. and she was asking me how I got on and I just said oh I, I don't really like the recruitment world it's not for me I've been here a year like I've made loads of money and I was, it's still not keep wanting me to, or it's, it's not making me want to stay yeah um, and she said, come back to us. And I was like, I can't go back. You know, I felt like it'd be one step back into, in, one step back in the hope of two steps forward. Mm. Um, and I didn't really know what else to do. And I said, you know, if I did go back, it would only be on a contract or something because the hours are better and I could probably do a personal training course. Mm. And, you know, but it was even just said in passing, I didn't actually think it'd be serious. And then she texted me the next day and said, listen, the guys would be interested in having you back if you'd be interested. So it all just kind of happened really fast, mm. and I met really, with them really fast. Yeah, like I, I just said I would go for a lunch with the MD, and he basically said we need someone who knows software. And I said, but look, I don't see myself being there forever. I don't really know what I want to do. Like I want to do fitness. I want to do a PT course. Mm. I don't even know if I can make a career. I don't know how I'll do it. No, in, in the back you know. of my head, I said like I don't care if I'm on the doll as long as I'm happy. I just felt like there's more to life than being at this desk nine to five. Yeah. Um, and so luckily I went back, um, that was December 2014. I left the recruitment company and went back to the software company. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what I was doing. Like that was probably scarier, leaving my permanent job to take a six month contract. Mm -hmm. But I just had this faith that it would be worth it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, I, I can't remember, I had a spare phone at the time. 
I, I'm, you know, very tech. I had a, a Galaxy and I was like, maybe I'll set up a separate Instagram account to put all my fitness stuff on there so it won't be annoying everyone. Um, and funny, it came, I also was trying to get a free Spotify account and I remember trying to get a free, e you know, the way to set up a free email. Yeah. And I was like, Siobhan O'Hagan was taken. I was like, Siobhan O'H. And I was like, fitness? I do like a fitness thing. I was like, maybe I'll have a fitness email. And I was like, Siobhan O'H fitness at gmail.com. And I, said, I remember sitting on the bus, it was a lash and rain, and it was, I was on Abbey Street, and I just remember thinking, picture my I was like, imagine OH fitness being a thing. Mm. I, I actually just, I remember it was lash and rain, and I was, it was a Friday evening coming home, I was depressed. And um, I just was like, imagine that was a thing. And then I set up the Instagram, but OH fitness mm. underscore IE, even though like I, I didn't have a website, I had no intention, like I didn't even think I'd ever make a career yeah. out of this before I even started the personal training course. Mm. I don't know why, I, I don't know why I put OH fitness underscore IE, but I set up that account and started putting, I started training with a personal trainer myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now I need to be my own best advertisement. Mm. So I, that, I think that was the final thing that kicked in my head. That mm. I actually got my diet right and trained hard. And because I was already really strong, I saw re results really quick, mm. which helped my Instagram pick up because I was putting up transformation photos, I was putting up what I'm doing, and people were seeing like this kind of crazy transformation that looked like mm. it happened really fast, when realistically I had a lot of muscle underneath. And, but the Instagram just picked up, and I just had this blind faith that I was going to make this happen. I don't know why I was so confident, but I just, I, I think it's because there was no other option. Yeah. I just didn't know what else I could do. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I feel like you're the personal training version of what I am, because your story is so similar to mine. We're doing different things, yeah. Yeah. but it's so similar. I know, and it's, I mean, everyone could do it, but um, I don't know if I got lucky or if it was because I had this mm. positive mindset. You worked your ass off. Yeah. Literally and metaphorically. Yeah. If there was one thing that I could see from your, I don't know at what stage I started following you. It's certainly you've got about forty thousand now followers on Instagram. Forty eight point six, or maybe fifty, but pretty soon, like it's crazy. So I think I probably started following you when you were maybe just in and around ten. And if there was one thing that was incredibly obvious to me was how hard you worked. I remember seeing posts where you would be up first thing in the morning to train in the gym. You'd then be going to work. I'm very sure I remember seeing posts of you standing in the rain at a bus stop, getting the bus home. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, it was, it was, the hardest part was when I started the course. So that was fine. Like I started training yeah. and I was seeing great results. Then I was starting the personal training course at the end of January and that was really the big challenge yeah. when I think a lot, of people, yeah, a lot of people that did the course probably let their training go of it, mm. whereas I made sure 5 a.m. every morning I was up, mm. I was in the gym for half five, I'd, drive, I'd have to drive the car back to the house and walk down to the bus stop mm. with my bags, and like, I had to prep my food, mm. I had to make sure everything was planned perfectly. I might uh, then you know go and do my job, but to be honest, <laughs> I hope they're not watching, but like when I was in the software company I was updating my Instagram, my head was just like, I want to be in fitness. Yeah. Um, and luckily it was nine to five, and I was out the door at five. I normally walked up then to O'Connell Street, sat in a Starbucks and normally went through my notes, and then mm. had to go to college from half seven to half nine. Was this every evening? Or? No, that was two evenings a week. Two evenings a week, okay. And then all day Saturday. Um, but then like, I'd get home half nine, ten, and actually, honestly, my mother was very good. I, like, I used to get the bus home after college mm. then, but my yeah. mother, she kind of saw how mm. exhausted I was all the time, and she used to come in and collect me, uh, which is great. But then, get home at ten o'clock, have to get the bags packed, the clothes, mm. food, everything ready for the next day, and do it again. Mm. And it just felt like I was exhausted. It was six months of being exhausted. I didn't really, I didn't go out much, mm. didn't drink. Um, I just had, like, this vision of where I wanted to go and I was seeing great results in my body but my like the Instagram was kicking off like mm -hmm. I had really started gathering followers I didn't really know what I was doing mm -hmm. but I just knew that people were interested so I just kept doing what I was doing mm -hmm. and it just went uh, it got to June when I qualified and by that stage I was a lot more confident I could make it as a career mm -hmm. because I had so many people following me then mm -hmm. I think I, I was going to say so many it was probably like 10,000 yeah but that, that is quite a few. Yeah, I know, it's mad. Like, I, I, every milestone, I'm like, I can't believe it. Mm. And it just keeps growing and growing. I got to June 2015. Mm. I was qualified as personal trainer. I was, like, ready to yeah. go. 
and my manager was pretty much like, it actually happened that he was like, we're actually taking on some permanent staff, so mm. when are you going to finish up? And I was like, that actually really, really scared me. I actually was like, I thought you guys were going to happy to keep me up. But they knew, yeah. they knew my plans, they knew, like, he yeah. was like, would you ever stop taking photos in the yeah. toilets? Like, because <laughs> <laughs> that, like, he'd see it on mine, you know, so I knew, like, I was like, oh God, this is the push. I didn't know yeah. what I was going to do. I, mm. I knew I had people that wanted me to train them. I didn't know where I was going to train them. Mm. I... I didn't know how it worked. Um, I think I had, I think I had met with Evolution, and mm -hmm. they were near my house. They handy, like it, it seemed like the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, but I left. I basically left. I think it was the end of June. It was my final Friday. I had no, I had no savings. Mm -hmm. I was. I know that feeling. <laughs> I left that Friday afternoon. I was going to Cold Line that night, so I was going out and I was, I was going drinking. Everything. And I remember walking, it was a really hot Friday evening in Dublin, walking in to meet my friends in the church and just been like, I'm unemployed, mm. I have no job. And I was, I got paid that day, it was like, that's it now. And I was like, it was just, that was crazy, but I was so happy. Mm. For so many people, that financial insecurity or that financial fear is the reason why people don't take steps towards their dreams or their goals or their yeah. vision. And it can be terrifying. We're almost blessed the way we don't have kids or a husband or mortgage that we yeah. have to worry about. Yeah. But that doesn't make the fear any less. Yeah. It doesn't make the fear go away in any way. And for me, when I was finishing up in my old job as well, I remember sitting there going, this is my last paycheck. I do not know when I'm gonna get more money coming in. Yeah. For me, I was working harder, not earning anything than I was having a steady salary coming in every month. Yeah. I was working 12 or 15 hours a day and I was still not seeing any money come in. Um, but again, just going back to you, I just saw someone work so incredibly hard. And it's crazy to think that this time two years ago you were sitting at a desk somewhere. Yeah. And what was it about fitness or becoming a personal trainer that was so motivating for you? Why I don't that know. Area? I remember the day, because I, I, at the time I was trying to, I was, like everything to extreme. I was training twice a day, mm. get nowhere, but I was, you know, trying to do weights in the morning, cardio yeah. in the evening, after between work. And I remember I remember just saying, It'd be great if I could just stay in the gym all day. Mm. And that was the moment where I was like, maybe I'll have a look at PT courses. Yeah. Um then when I realised the changes I was making and seeing how happy I was, I really wanted mm. I wanted to, to make females realise that it is possible like if I could do it and change my body as much as I had mm. that anyone could do it because yeah. I think it's very you see a lot of people that you know have lost a lot of weight and not that it's in no way easy mm. but I think everyone gets that point where they feel like that's as best as they're going to get yeah. um, and I felt like that I, I never thought I was I wasn't in bad shape mm. you know like I, I just never thought I'd ever hear abs and, and mm. referring to me yeah um i felt like i was training hard i was you know living my life you know life's too short to be sitting in and be skinny but like i just felt like it is possible to change your body and i wanted to i want to get i still do want to get that across to females that like males as well that you know if you want it hard enough it is possible yeah. you weight training will change your body you don't have to be doing hours of cardio yeah um mm. so yeah and between that's that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I, that's what I'm doing now, and yeah. it's crazy though. Mm. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge so far establishing OH Fitness online as a coach, having the social media presence that you do? What's been the hardest part of it all? I suppose I, I'm very much like positivity, positivity. So, like, I try and take the positive of everything. Like I used to try and I, I try and please everyone. Like mm -hmm. even anyone's even if anyone messages me and trying to get back to them, I even I, I think I got a bit I got a bit of anxiety between trying to, especially while I was still doing the course and working and people were emailing me just looking for advice and. You must have gotten particularly through Facebook. You must yeah, have gotten yeah. a huge amount of that. So I really I was getting that. You know everyone just like hey how did you lose your hips or hey how did you get abs you know like and it's like where do I begin and you know, the messages are piling up. I was. And so I just was like, okay, look, you can't please everyone. I disabled Facebook Messenger, mm -hmm. so people couldn't message me on Facebook anymore. Yeah. So then if they wanted to contact me, they had to email me. Mm -hmm. So they'd, it'd be more people who genuinely actually wanted to talk yeah. to me. I think people were just seeing my photo on Facebook and like, hey, home and how did you get a tone to me? Yeah. And I was getting that so much. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I like things like that. I was like, okay, no, be more realistic. You know, I started, you know, like just look working at systems a bit more. So yeah. flagging emails and saying I'm going to do that later, and yeah. you know, just getting sy systems were very much important because I just think it was all happening so fast. Mm. I had a lot of businesses, like every business has seen my media grow and you know mm. saw me as a good advertisement. I had so many businesses coming to me and want me to advertise and I still to this day don't really do mm. advertising because I think the reason my following grows is because the people know that I'm genuine, I'm not yeah. selling things, and yeah. besides my own program, but even I don't even do the hard sell yeah. on my own coaching because mm. I think people want to, need to be ready, I don't want to force people into mm. yeah. So challenges, I haven't had too many, to be okay. honest, which is a good complaint. And why do you think that is? Is it because you have to do good outlook and stuff? Or is it because you've been, I, I, you've been very authentic the entire time you've been Yeah, doing like this? I haven't done anything, I haven't done anything dishonest. I've been very lucky with a lot of opportunities I've gotten. Mm. Like there are times where it's been a quiet week where I'm like, whoa, what am I going to do money wise? Yeah. But not bad enough. Again, you know, I, I'm only looking after myself, I, you know, I've had... I'm back living at home now, which, to be honest, is great. <laughs> like, so it's not even a challenge. Like so, um, but I just kind of, if I felt like, you know, oh, I'm not busy this week, which very rarely happens. There's always a, a lot on, you know. Like I'd just push out. I would do a bit of a hard sell, you know, and explain what I do, and you know, yeah. it just kind of makes a few more people. So luckily I've got the audience there, I've got people's attention if I do need to sell to them, mm. but I don't like doing the hard sell. Mm. It's trying to find the balance of like, sometimes I feel like I should be working harder. Like, mm. my goal is to be happy. Mm. It's not to make a lot of money. Mm. So for me, happiness means having more free time. So I'm not trying to take on the most rent clients. I'm mm. not trying to, make the most amount of money I'm just trying to live my life each day mm. happily so I'm, it, you know sometimes I feel like oh maybe I'm not working hard enough when I'm supposed to be this there's a lot of people and I experienced this when I first started the Better Life Project we have this perception that hard work is 12 hours a day blood sweat and tears non-stop and then you're on your deathbed 96 years of age and people are going what did you do with your life oh I worked really hard yeah we forget about this bigger picture that is yeah. happiness in life yeah. and life relationships no, and that's why i've got a lot of the great systems in place for my yeah. online coaching it's going really well like i was quite hesitant at the start because like, i don't i'm not forcing i'm not doing six week transformations mm -hmm. you know so i'm not forcing before and after photos which is hard because some people are like hey you know where's the results yeah but you know i like sometimes do have great photos but i feel like saying and also They've also had lived their life in the six weeks. They're not just yeah. eating chicken and broccoli, and yeah. um, so I'm kind of just such a massive, massive win is that yeah. supporting clients create that that sustainable element. Yeah, that's what I say. I always say I'm not selling a six week transformation. I'm selling a lifestyle change, yeah. and that's why you might not see the most amazing results, but they go away mm. independent and not reliant on me. Mm. Um, so like I'm not trying to resell it to them. I want them to be independent, to be confident, going into a gym themselves, and. Mm you know, confident to making a lot of food choices. Yeah. And, and so yeah, that's, and do you know, that's one challenge actually, I was struggling with the nutrition side of it and mm -hmm. then I got Eamon on board to help with the nutrition side of my online coaching. We interviewed him yesterday. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, so I love Eamon, I love Eamon's approach to it mm -hmm. and everything. So that was a challenge that I just was like, okay, find a way to pay someone mm -hmm. to be the nutrition expert, the mm -hmm. expert. Expert. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the things like that, like I, and it, it's taken a, a weight off me because mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't able to answer questions properly. And, yeah. You know, I want people to think they're getting their money's worth as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's a, a really good bonus. So I've got a proper nutritionist on board. Is there one thing that you do every single day? Is there a habit or a routine that you have that think has helped you get to where you are now? I always have always got up early. Like 6 a.m. I can't even sleep past six if I tried. I think my mom says as soon as I got out of as soon as I got out of Matthews, I just wouldn't sleep. Mm. Yeah. So even like all through my leaving search, I got up and studied at 6 a.m. and mm. always trained in the morning. I just think when you get up early, but for me, it's my most productive. Mm. Even if I don't have a client until nine, I'll always I'll always get up and train. Like even if I had one client at nine, I would always train before it. And do you snooze? Never. Snooze ever. Is my worst enemy. Ever ever hit the so I actually don't know that time. You just get up. I just, I, like sometimes there's, sometimes if I've been up late, it'd be like painful, 
but I always just open my phone and like, there's always enough notifications there to yeah. just wake up and just start yeah. opening your eyes. I think snoozing is just delaying the pain. Like, I, I snooze just, for about an hour most mornings. Oh my God. Hot. I hate it, I hate it. I it's like you just need to rip the plaster off. I know, I go to bed at night and I'm like, I'm so ready to get up early. Like today I wanted to go up at seven o'clock and then it was eight o'clock when I got out of bed. I know. And I, I, I don't know if I would, like normally I do have clients early morning or else I have to train mm. early morning. So there's always something that I do normally have to get up for. Yeah. So that's, and I think it's like I'm excited for breakfast most of the time. But I, the one thing I do try and do is in the middle of the day, because I, you know, I'd have clients in the evening, mm. um, but in the middle of the day, I do try and get to a Starbucks or just I'd always have to sit down mm. with my laptop at some stage because if I don't do that, I'm behind. Yeah. Um, but like my day, it, it, I used to have a lot more structure, mm. but now my days are completely different every day. Yeah. So it's great. Like, so I, I do try and do a to do list or. Mm you know, take some time, I'm actually doing something on my to-do list that's going to improve me or, you know, mm. that's benefiting me long term. Um, but no, at the moment, daily, I'm just enjoying my life. Yeah, brilliant. What yeah. advice would you have for people who are looking to leave their job and maybe they want to become a personal trainer, maybe they want to become a life coach, maybe they just want to become an architect and they're a freaking engineer at the moment. What advice would you give? I think... Speaking of engineering, I'd say reverse engineer everything. Yeah. Like, they, like I thought about being a personal trainer. I thought, okay, well, how am I going to get that? I need to do a personal training course. Yeah. Looked at the personal training course. Okay, I don't have time to do the personal mm -hmm. training course. I then basically found a job that would allow me mm -hmm. to have time to do the personal training course. And even then, to be a successful personal trainer, I knew I had to get myself in shape. Mm -hmm. So I had to re reverse engineer that. I had mm -hmm. to get the diet on track. I had to get a personal trainer myself. Mm -hmm. I had to work every single morning mm. and I, I don't want to say that I did take rest days and that mm. like it's not that extreme but I mean I figured out what I had to do and did it okay um like it, it seemed impossible if you said to me two years ago that everything that's happened to me would be happening mm. like it just seemed completely impossible but I had this blind faith that I'd, it would happen like I'm I, I would after studying maths and physics and everything I would be so I'm so like skeptical of things like the secret but I really think the law of attraction mm. has played a big part in this yeah. only because I think subconsciously you make these decisions and keeping a positive attitude and mm -hmm. it makes things happen yeah. um, and like I haven't let anything knock me back like I've had a couple of things that I could have let but I'm actually just saying that no I've it's pretty much been mm. not plain sailing but like just yeah. building momentum and so I think for other people I think you just have to really write down like I sometimes I just write down like okay like my my thing now is that I want to get it all online mm -hmm. which is scary because a huge portion of my income is mm. the one-on-one -on -one personal training yeah. clients and obviously I don't want to let anyone down so I'm looking at like scaling it back mm. and like that I'm reverse engineering I'm looking yeah. at how much money I need to make online to yeah. survive and going backwards, like how many clients that we have to train, how would I make sure that I have that many, and then working backwards yeah. to then what I need to do today to make that happen. And do you try to do it all at once or do you take baby steps? No, that's what I mean, so I'd have to work back to what I can do then to yeah. today. Yeah. That will put me in a better position tomorrow to be closer to what I really want. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. What's been your proudest moment so far from the business side of things, cool. from the social media influence side of things? Just people, I mean, people ask me your photos now, it's just crazy. Really? Like, people coming up and that are getting starstruck or that love me, like, it's crazy because yeah. like, they know me mm. inside out because I put so much online. But, but I don't know, like, just being paid or making money from doing something I like, mm. getting up every day, driving around in a car that was given to me because of my social media. Mm. It is, just pinching myself like, yeah. it's just crazy mm. um i don't like everything is just amazing i don't know if that sounds really like i'm happy you know mm. and like i wake up i wake up happy and go to bed like sometimes i get stressed and a lot to do and i feel bad with some emails i haven't gone back to mm. but i know i can handle it and mm. i'm so excited about not knowing what's even mm. ahead you have the right amount of attitude, positive mental attitude, hard work and almost business savvy 
you seem to get all of it. Yeah. I think if you look at someone who's trying to create success in our life, they need to have a little bit of all of that. And, mm. and it's usually when they're not creating the success that they want, not creating the sex that they want, the success, <laughs> <laughs> they're missing one of those crucial ingredients. Yeah. Um, I do think that has really helped me, like my, even the software background. Like I'm really, yeah. you know, obviously tech savvy. Mm. I was always good at social media, even before, and I have social media contacts from working in the right venue. Yeah. And there's loads of things that, it's helped mm -hmm. and anything I've ever done. I know, like even working in Zumo in the juice bar in the airport, I remember I, everything I've ever done, I've always been very good at because I always gave it everything. Mm -hmm. Like that's why the, even the financial software, like I wasn't the smartest, but I worked hard and that's why they wanted me back. Mm -hmm. Recruitment, I was really good at it. They were shocked when I left. Mm -hmm. But I feel like now I'm doing something I'm good at and I really enjoy and it's just come together so well. Yeah. Um, and I suppose I wasn't, when I stopped chasing, Stop chasing money mm. and chase happiness instead. Yeah. So the money follows, but like yeah. it's not my end goal. Like I'm, that's probably one thing I'm not bad at. I'm not good at is mm. planning and saving and mm. you know really looking at the future realistically. Yeah. I think I'm living a probably a little bit more in a dream, mm. but I'm just kind of yoloing for now. I suppose. It's only been 18 it's, months though. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we're entitled to be able to sit back and enjoy it as well. Cause yeah, I did go look at getting a pension. And she's, Jesus. yeah, that was kind of, she's like, so what time age do you want to retire? And you know, I was like, oh, next year, 25. Yeah, and she's like, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> and then um, she's like, no, well, the, what will you be doing? Are you going to retire at 65? You know, will you still be doing this when you're 65? Mm. Like, that was really like, yeah. oh, holy God, what am I going to do? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, you know, I get hit by bus tomorrow. Yeah. And I want, like, and, one big thing that helped me change my life was my dad had a brain hemorrhage and nearly died on the spot. Okay. And luckily, 100% fine, we're so lucky. But he, he changed, like he'd spent, what did he do? so he'd spent probably 30 years mm. working for someone else and he was high up in a big company and, you know, really good job. And he, mm. you know, was a couple of mortgages and everything. And then he decided he was too stressed and he quit his job and was after going out on his own. Mm. Wow. And that was so inspirational for me. So it's um, in the blood almost. Yeah, yeah. Myself and my mom works for herself as well. So my mom and my dad and me mm. are all at home killing each other working <laughs> from home. Um, but no, it's great. Yeah. And like even he might not even be earning his enough, but seeing him playing golf on a Wednesday afternoon is just yeah. great. You it's know, a like, real priority check, isn't it? Yeah. It forces you to really take yeah. stock of what's important in your and life. And that's when I realised like it's me getting the I don't think it was ever really as much the jobs I didn't like. It was getting that bus at the same time every single day mm. for the next 40 years. There's the monotony to it. I just was like, there has to be more than life to this. Yeah. Yeah. So much of what motivated me to do what I did was there's the, the lifestyle element to it as well. I want to be able to feel like I can do what I want when I want it. Yeah. And you're still, you still work like an absolute dog when you're self-employed. Yeah. That part doesn't change. I was in Vegas doing webinars, you know, like, yeah. but it, the fact I was able to go to it, you know, like the flexibility is Absolutely. amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. And, and I think we're so blessed to be able to do it. But Guys, as I was editing the final bits of the amazing interview you've just watched with none other than, than Siobhan O'Hagan, aka OH Fitness, a little itty bitty bit at the end was cut out. Now, I don't know what the technology gods were doing, but it was basically me thanking Siobhan from the bottom of my heart to taking the time out of her busy schedule to come over, over to my Fancy Dancy studio in Redfish to be interviewed. She is such an inspiration to so many people out there. If you want to follow her and her journey a little bit more, there's a whole bunch of platforms that you can jump on board to follow. The first one, the one that she's probably the most well known for is Instagram. So make sure that you find her at ohfitness underscore dot ie. You can find her on Snapchat. I'm going to say it wrong, but shivsies. And I'm going to spell it for you right now. S-I-O-B-H-S-I-E-S. -S -E you can find her on Facebook. You can find her on YouTube and on her website, siobhanohfitness.com. From the bottom of my heart, guys, thank you so much for checking in and watching this incredible episode of Better Life Project TV, where we help you make your awesome business and job happen. That's it from me, guys. Make sure you stay tuned to next week when I bring you another incredible guest speaker. Take care.